Hello everyone, my name is Rita Barclay Hart and I'll be giving a quick look at the geographical and evolutionary history of both Costa Rica and Colorado. Now I chose these two places because they're both places I've been lucky enough to visit and they're very different. So I thought it would be a good look at um, these two things. So let's jump into it. First, we have the geological and geographical history of Costa Rica. So if you look at the image on your left, you can see that Costa Rica is right along the boundary of the Cocos Plate and the Caribbean Plate. These are two tectonic plates. Now, when they hit, the Cocos Plate is forced down, and this creates a volcanic mountain range along Costa Rica, as you can see on the image on your right. All of the little yellow uh, triangles represent volcanoes that are still active today. But in the past, these volcanoes built up landmass and built up landmass until eventually it broke above surface, and it created Costa Rica, along with the land bridge between North America and South America. Now, Costa Rica is incredibly diverse, both in ecosystems and in species. So if you look at the image on your left, all of the different colors represent different ecosystems found within Costa Rica. And to kind of show you like what this more looks like, we have the images on the right. These are all these are three four different types of forests that are all very abundant in Costa Rica. Um, and as you can see, they're also very different. So the top one is a tropical cloud forest, the middle one is a tropical rainforest, and the bottom one is a tropical dry forest. And as you can see, these obviously all have different species, and they're they're all so abundant in Costa Rica. Now, one of the reasons that Costa Rica is able to have this range in ecosystems and species is that it is on the equator. So it always gets between 11 and 12 hours per of sunlight um, every single day of the year. The temperature never changes that drastically and it always has high rainfall. So these all help it um, have such a large number of species. It is also a land bridge between North and South America, so species migrating both down and up can settle here, which also helps the high numbers, helps um, helps Costa Rica have a, a greater number of species. Now, if we're looking at the evolutionary history of Costa Rica, most of the species that were in Costa Rica did not survive, but a group of species that did survive was the Xantharthians. These include present, or, um, <laughs> present day, like examples of these would be sloths, armadillos, and anteaters. Um, and the ancestors were all found in Costa Rica. Now, one of the things these all have in common that help trace the ancestral lineage is um, greater connections of the vertebrae. <coughs> I'm sorry, excuse me. It's lots of connections in the vertebrae. Um, now, a group, now two different groups of species that did not survive were the astroprometheums, which were large marsupials with tusks that would be most equivalent to a present day taper, but obviously they did not survive. And then a really cool species called Saparasodonta, which was a large, actually marsupial. It grew as large as a bear, it had huge tusks, and it was a really cool predator. Um, sadly, it didn't survive, but I thought that was very cool. Now, because Costa Rica is so new, and it was a land bridge, there's also lots of animals that arrived in Costa Rica, both from South and North America. Now, starting with South America, three examples of species that um, migrated up to Costa Rica and evolved from there are present-day porcupines, capybara, and spider monkeys. The really cool thing about these species is that they are from South America, but before that, their ancestors were actually from Africa. The evolutionary lineage can only be traced in Central and South America to a certain point, and then it completely stops, but it can also be traced in Africa. So scientists think the most likely explanation is that these species found a way across the Atlantic and then settled in Central and South America and um, evolved from there, which is incredibly cool. And then some examples of species that came from North America would be deer and foxes. Moving on to Colorado. So Colorado, if Costa Rica is very new, about 50 million years old, Colorado is very old. Pan Colorado was actually formed when Pangaea split apart, which happened about 200 million years ago. So when Pangaea split apart, a large chunk of land called Lutharia collided with several smaller chunks of land, and that actually created the Rocky Mountains, 
which are still growing today. Um, and yeah, so that is a large part of the formation of Colorado, but Colorado also has a, a very large range of different land formations. And another one that is very cool that's found in Colorado are the mesas, largely found in Western Colorado. These were actually formed by ancient seas that used to lay over Colorado. Now, looking at the evolutionary history of Colorado, some species that were found in Colorado and evolved in Colorado and are still around today would be the redwood tree. Now, you can see that on your left. This is the oldest redwood tree ever known, and it was found in Colorado. Now, obviously, redwood trees aren't found in Colorado presently because uh, conditions have changed, but they are still found in, Col in California. Now, if you look on your right, that is the oldest known picture of a rose, or not pi picture, excuse me, the oldest known rose. Um, it's a fossil that was found in Colorado, and it is the oldest known ancestor to the modern rose. So I thought that was very cool. Now, for some things that are some animals that obviously didn't survive, we have the dinosaurs. Now, the dinosaurs were wiped out about 65 million years ago. But before that, two species of dinosaur that were very present in Colorado was the T-Rex. You can see an example of the T-Rex um, on your right. This is the best known and uh, most well-preserved T-Rex skull. And then on your left, we have a Branchiosaurus, which was a large herbivore that was very present in Colorado. Now, one of the other um, coolest features of Colorado's like geographical and uh, geological history is that it was actually covered in water for a very long time. So as you can see here, there was a seaway that covered Colorado from roughly 150 to about 60 million years ago. Um, and in this, you had some really cool species like the Plesiosaurus, which is the top right picture. And then on the bottom, uh, a scory corax, which was a really cool kind of ancient shark, which of course, um, it is a ancestor of modern sharks. So uh, I hope this was informative and interesting and that uh, you learned something today. Thank you so much.